Today on The Morning Show, why Jan Arden is getting slammed for her support of disgraced chef Paula Dean. The Lumberjack song, the dead parrot, the argument clinic, Monty Python member and travel expert Michael Palin is here. And he flashes his badge as officer Chris Diaz on the hit global series Rookie Blue. We're joined by actor Travis Mill. Welcome to The Morning Show. Canada's conversation starts now. Good morning, everyone. It is Thursday, June the 27th. Thanks for joining us here on The Morning Show. And any day you have one of the founding members of Monty Python on, you know it's going to be a good day. You know it's going to be a good day. I want to break out in tune. I know, <laughs> right? We, we've all been so excited since this got booked that yes. Michael Palin will be joining us today, and that will be coming up in just a couple of minutes. But first, here's the buzz. Canadian musician Jan Arden has weighed in on the Paula Deen controversy, controversy, and she's being roasted for it. Arden took to Twitter yesterday writing, what they are doing to Paula Dean is disgusting. Those in glass houses should not throw stones. And then she also wrote, ironically, it's bigots who are going after Paula Dean's character like they are perfect citizens. What a bunch of BS, you bunch of whiteies. Hmm. First Funny of all, we don't want to weigh in here. Uh, well, <laughs> I, I would say that's exactly what I was going to yeah. say. If you don't have to, why maybe mm -hmm. would you want to if you're a celebrity? Because like it's a lose lose. It and seems like. the moment you come to the defense of someone who made a racial comment and you're not from the African American community, I don't think it's your place. Yeah, I Do actually I rescind what I just said. You do have a responsibility to step up and say things when people are being derogatory, whether it's homophobic right. or speak out. whether you should speak but out. But here's the problem, and I think this is where you were going, that by speaking out and saying, you know, Paula Deans, I support you, it can be misconstrued as being, I support what you did. Exactly. Yes. Right. And yes. that's where the problem lies. Right. Right. Because I, there's no way, we all know Jan Arden, that she would be supportive of what no, no, Paula no. did. No, no, she's a no. great, great woman. No, that's true. And I just think that, as you said, Liza, once you start, then, then, then it doesn't really stop because you know you only have 160 characters, so mm -hmm. you you can only tweet so right. much, and so you really do need to c explain yourself if you want to uh, support someone like that. And I think that Paula Dean probably is a fine woman, but what's getting and out the there? Thing? Yeah, like, what's up with yeah. Why Jen Arden wouldn't even open herself up to this sort of criticism is mm -hmm. beyond me. And not just say it, make the comment, but mm -hmm. get into it with some of the people that are tweeting her back. And then she she's yeah, it's undaunted by the criticism. Yeah. She continues mm -hmm. to go on, maybe just to defend the argument. However. I think you go, going beyond place. those 140 characters, it's tough when it's an issue like this. So I'm sure yeah, Jan yeah, at some point will, will talk about what she meant. Um, but at the meantime, whenever she's got a great sense of humor. Mm -hmm. And that's the problem here. Which that doesn't always to be translate funny. as it well. Doesn't. Emails or anything in when you write it down, it doesn't mm -hmm. translate. Yeah. Let's move on. Let's talk about the Grand Canyon, Mount Rushmore perhaps. What about the White House? Those are all great U.S. landmarks. But mm -hmm. according to one travel site, those... They're not the most popular. Believe it or not, folks, that distinction goes to the fountain at the Bellagio Casino in Las Vegas. <laughs> yeah, you have to say it like that, Leslie. You have to put a question mark at yeah. it. It was that voted statement. the best American landmark by users on TripAdvisor ahead of Gettysburg as well as the USS Arizona Memorial in Hawaii. What's going on here, folks? I know. Is it just that more people have seen the Bellagio fountain, perhaps, than all of these other landmarks? I don't Let's know. Let's go with that. What, yeah. What's amazing yeah. is that Mount Rushmore um, didn't even, even make the top on ten. The list. So what does that tell Nor you? Nor is right? the Statue of Liberty. Mm -hmm. That would be the one I would pick. And I it's supposed to be that. symbolic to American history, right? But I think this is goes to the to the to, to the problem out there, and we have the same problem here in Canada. Is we don't remember our history enough. I mean, it's a mandatory grade ten in many provinces yeah. that mm -hmm. Canadian history thing, mm -hmm. but we don't do enough to embrace. I mean, what is what are the landmarks in Canada? Parliament Hill? Tower. Mm -hmm. Tower. Uh, Parliament Hill, I'd hope, yeah, but I Parliament bet you most Hill. people, maybe because right. we're here in Toronto, would mm -hmm. pick would the Big pick Nickel. The right. The, the Big, big Nickel. Yeah. 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 The Sudbury. Big Apple. In Sudbury. <laughs> the Big Apple. What about out west? In Ontario. Yeah. Uh, you're, you're With the Canadian Port? Shield, I, I mean, we've got question. natural. There you like, go. Yeah, natural ones, right. Yeah, yeah. natural yeah. ones. Just to drive through the Rockies is Well, I mean, like the prairies, like all of like a wheat field and things like that would be, but that's not a landmark. But that's something like that imagery that comes to mind. We have natural landmarks. Yeah. yeah, we don't more, need to put anything up yeah, We don't need that man-made yeah. stuff like the Bellagio. But all yeah. I can say is the, the owner of the Bellagio is like... Loving this. Yes, thank yeah. you. Thank you. Well, well, speaking of landmarks around Canada, do you think we spend enough money 
promoting Canada. Absolutely not, according to a new major tourism report. They say Canada's marketing efforts should be substantially increased in the face of massive spending from countries such as Ireland, Australia, New Zealand. Ireland smaller than us, Australia relatively the same size. And they spend, we spend like 58 million bucks, really? whereas Australia spends 147 million. Mm -hmm. Let's be honest here. Would you, if you had a, a, a vacation option going forward, money was not an issue, how many of you would stay in Canada? If money was not an issue, exactly. well, that's a tough one. I mean, we're we're from here, but yeah. there are a lot of people from outside this country who love coming here. Come the here. question is, do they know about it? Do they know the beauty of this? Have country? you been to every province in this country? I'm putting you guys in the hot seat. No, and yes. I wish I had been. I yes. I have I, not been to nearly right. enough. I have. Yes. So yeah. have I. But I did yeah. a travel show, and mm -hmm. I've been, I was lucky when I did the travel show that I got got to go some great places and got paid to do it because this was years ago. Mm -hmm. And one of my favorite places to this day, and I say this is? honestly. Newfoundland. I was just going to say, Newfoundland is one of the greatest Absolutely. treasures in this Stunning. in the world. Honestly, if you don't mind the cool weather. I mean, I went there and I had shorts and because yeah. I just assumed July was going to be hot, and I got there with a TV show wardrobe, and I was sitting right. there going, "Welcome to Newfoundland." <laughs> yeah. So I grabbed some sweaters. But Gros Morne is one of the most beautiful places yeah. you've ever been. The people are second to none, and I, you know, fortunately. Tr through this travel show, met a lot around the world, yeah. and I got to kiss the cod. More importantly, oh, you did. <laughs> right. You had to do that. We but you know, I wonder so about how many how many people know about right. Newfoundland. I mean, I think that, yep. that there should be a little bit more money spent to promote this. Because well, even that there's great Hyden surfing Jen, on the Hyden east coast Jen. of yeah. Canada yeah. and things like that. Yeah, like, wear your that. your yeah. uh, wetsuit, however, it's cold. Yeah, yeah, it is cold. It is definitely mm -hmm. going to be cold. All right, still ahead. On the morning show, Rookie Blue is back on Global tonight. We'll be joined a little later by Travis Milne, who is the star of the show. Gloss. I'm a lumberjack and I'm okay. I sleep all <laughs> night and I work all day. Coming up next, he's a comedic genius and Monty Python member and one heck of a nice guy. He's also received a prestigious Canadian prize, Michael Palin. Yes, he is in the house and in the studio next. He cuts down trees, he eats his lunch, he goes to the laboratory. And that's a look at the new travel series Brazil with Michael Palin debuting June 30th on TVO. Before becoming a travel documentarian, Michael Palin rose to fame as one of the founding members of the legendary comedy troupe Monty Python. And tonight he's being honored in Toronto with an award from the Royal Canadian Geographical Society. And Michael Palin joins us now. Good morning. Good morning, Good morning. Good morning. and welcome yeah. to Toronto. I know you've Thank been you. coming here since the 70s under Monty Python and we have so, yeah. much, so much to talk to you about. Yeah. So let's start with that. Okay. When, the, when the troupe got together, did you know the impact you would have on the world of comedy Not to this at day? All. No, I mean, we, 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 we knew we were doing something different. We deliberately wanted to do something different from the conventional TV comedy shows. But the BBC put us on very late at night. You know, there, there wasn't a great deal of support. The audiences were not huge to start with. But we said, well, just, well, we'll go on with what makes us laugh. That if, if the six of us laugh at it, then it's okay. There may be somebody else, a seventh or an eighth. And gradually, gradually, it picked up an audience. But those were the days when there was no sort of DVDs, you know. If you've missed it on television, that was it, the mm -hmm. end of it. Must see TV in the true yeah. form. Yeah, so, um, you know, we, we uh, what's happened now, people, as you say, call it, calling us legendary and all that, just yeah. seems kind of quite weird. What was the tipping point, do you think? Do you think it was the British audience that really made it? Or do you think no. it was the international reception? I think it was the international audience. It was in 1974 when after several attempts to get the US market, because it was the biggest market, we'd given up. And yet uh, a TV station in Dallas, Texas, picked up some of the Python shows. Of all places, Texas got he, your Exactly, humor. yeah. He just was in New York buying some shows, said, what's this? Uh, well, I'll buy a few and see what it's like. They went down so well, he bought all of them, 45 Python shows, showed them over a weekend, and that went around the PBS network, you know, so it went from, from place to place. But it started in Dallas and went to places like, you know, Baton Rouge before it even reached uh, New York. So really? It, was, it spread like wildfire around a kind of young audience in the States. How and you, that was the tipping point, I think. Do you categorize the type of comedy that Python does? Because it seems like it's sort of surrealist. Yeah. And like, is there a category that it falls into? I, I don't think so. I would say silly covers it pretty, right. pretty much so. And everybody loves silly. 
Well, I think they do. I mean, there's a lot of comedy now which is very cutting edge and, and great, but it's, it's quite attacking. Python's always been to sort of a kind of fairly joyful show, you mm -hmm. know. You see it at the end, you kind of smile and laugh, and that's it. Are you, because are you, uh, you, you called it tacky, which is interesting. So when you look at today's comedy, are you disappointed in the way people have gone? Um, uh, no, I didn't did I say tacky, I meant attacking. Um, no, I think it's just evolution of comedy. And people are more, a little more self-conscious now about just going off and doing something completely mm. off the wall. You usually program, you have to kind of explain what the show is. If we'd had to go to the BBC all those years ago, in 1969, with a job description, I don't know what would have happened, you know, because none of us quite knew what the show was going to be till we did it. Mm -hmm. We actually kind of, it was rehearsal on air, as it were. Did you grow up in a household of humour? Um, yeah, my father had this kind of, he was, <laughs> he was practical joke sort of man, you know, he had fake dog turds and things like that. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, That's I still it have, from, isn't I that think. sad? I still have one you in still my have cupboard. One. Well, my really? dad's old fake dog oh. turd, I just <laughs> don't throw it away. It's <laughs> still funny though. Who, who still would collect funny. it? Yeah. So we talk, you talk about the evolution of comedy, let's talk about the evolution of your career. And, and why you're here. Mm. I mean, you are um, a travel expert. You have uh, so many travel shows. And in mm. fact, now you're, you're focusing on Brazil. Mm. And you're here uh, being honored by the Canadian yeah. uh, Ge Geological mm. uh, Geographical Geographical. Society. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm. yeah. Mm. and so how did that transpire? Well, I think I've always wanted to travel. And I was born and brought up in north of England just after the war. There was no cheap flights. It was very difficult to get around the world. And then in in 1987, I just finished A Fish Called Wanda. There was nothing around. The BBC said, look, we've got a new idea. Why don't you go around the world in 80 days? Follow the old Jules Verne story. You have a camera going all the way, and you've got to do it in real time. No cheating, no flights. You're the guy who can do it. You've got everything. <laughs> and they went on like this. So I said, OK, I'll do it. And we were halfway around the world in some bar somewhere. In uh, and the director admitted I was the fifth person they'd asked to do it. So <laughs> I was hardly, you know, it wasn't just me. But I, I did it because I actually enjoyed travel, and I think that's what, why my shows work. I have a great team, and I enjoy what I'm doing. And they're not sort of, I'm not being a, an expert on politics or sociology or anything like that. I'm trying to get people around the world to talk for themselves and tell me their story. You enjoy so, meeting people. I enjoy, I love meeting mm. people, yeah. I think it's just great, because I, I always used to be a rather shy boy and rather frightened of the world. And I thought, you know, I don't speak languages. How can I go abroad? You know, I just can't travel. And, and when you do it, it's just great. People are so friendly and, 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 and on the whole, really welcoming. And they want to make you feel comfortable. And they're proud of their country, did nearly people, everywhere you go. Did people know who you were when you met them? Um, and was there a pressure to be funny for them a little bit? Well, no, that's interesting. I, I, I think I started trying to be funny uh, the beginning of Around the World in 80 Days. And then I thought, just be yourself. Funny yeah. things will happen, but be yourself. And, and, and that worked much, much better. And I got myself into a kind of usual situation, a bit of a mess and all that sort of thing. And then the humor comes up, but uh, not, to, not to force it onto the shows. Because I didn't want to sort of be laughing at the world. I wanted to, I, mm -hmm. I really genuinely wanted to find out what people are like, what their hopes for the future are, what, how they see our world, you know, that kind of thing. And why focus on Brazil solely now? Uh, Brazil, because uh, it's the fifth biggest country in the world. I'd never been there. I felt a cur very curious about it. And with the World Cup soccer coming up and the Olympics in 2016, I thought this is the time to go. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a kind of introduction to Brazil, really, which is such a vast, vast place. And of all the places you've been to, and it's 100 countries almost now, what was yeah. the biggest surprise for you? The biggest surprise? Um, I, I suppose someone like Peru, you know, which I kind of just thought it's a, a name, South America and all that, but just the sort of richness of the place, you know, not just Machu Picchu and the mountains, but we went on, our, on the rapids down to the Amazon, we saw Lake Titicaca, highest lake in the world, absolutely beautiful jade colour. I mean, that was, that was just amazing. I, 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 I'd recommend anyone to go to Peru. Do you still have a wish list place after all of that travelling? Um, yeah, yeah, there's quite a lot of places I'd like to go. I'd like to go, I'd quite like to go to the Middle East. I've not really done places mm -hmm. like Iran and Iraq. It's just so difficult. Whenever we try and go there, war breaks out. So right. It could use a little humor the over way. there, shall we say. Yeah, well, <laughs> I, I think that's probably true, and I bet there is a lot of humor. You know, one thinks, oh, these people are just having a terrible time. In times of stress, people look for humor. It gets mm -hmm. them through it. So mm -hmm. I think you'll probably find in these places, they'd be quite glad to see you. Thank you for putting all the smiles on our faces for so many <laughs> years and introducing us to the world. 
uh, you know, Thank through you. your travels. Yeah. And also, we should say you're a writer as well, a couple of novels under your belt. You're yep. quite the remarkable man who em embraces getting outside <laughs> your comfort zone, I think. Uh, yes, yeah. Well, I'm lucky. I've, I've done many things I've enjoyed in my lifetime. You've just got to make sure you do them well. Michael Words Hammond. to live by, absolutely. Great wisdom there. Congratulations on, again, the Royal Canadian Geographical Society's award, the gold medal. Congrats. Thank you. Thank so you. nice to meet you, Michael Palin. Hopefully. Thank you. Enjoy Canada. Coming up, digging deeper in your pockets for those things you depend on most. After the break, TMS asks, what would you be willing to spend more money on? We'll be right back. Well, everybody likes a great deal when it comes to shopping, but sometimes, as they say, you get what you pay for, which mm -hmm. is why some things you want to invest more in, be it uh, an item or perhaps, in my particular case, it's a hotel. So when I travel, I don't want to oh. get there and get in some flea bag, you know, mm -hmm. yeah, one so star. Yeah, so that's what you'll spend more on? I will, I will say it's worth the extra, extra money. Uh, and I'll, you know, bite my tongue as I'm doing it. And, I mean, not that I want to necessarily spend that much money to yeah, take a but I get it you know. I, I find, for me the hotel is part of the experience right. when you go on vacation yep. it really is so I, I'm with you on that one my choice um, this is my proper sort of PC choice was organic food I'll spend more money on like or That's you know so antibiotic free meats and things like that oh, you're my good mom. real deep down answer yeah. is jewelry Jewelry. <laughs> but, yeah. but, it's hard to washing the vegetables now. I know, really I said organic to, food earlier way. because that seems like the right thing to say and Be it's honest. true. Yeah, but well. really, really, it's jewelry. Uh, and it's you wear fruit and vegetables now? <laughs> yeah, right, exactly. Just, as long as they're Literally. sparkly and, <laughs> yeah. and yeah. Yeah. diamonds then, in yes. the shape of fruit. Well, I didn't have much time to think about this. Oh, my goodness, what will you pay more for? But uh, one of the first things that came to mind, uh, a pair of jeans. It's so hard jeans. to find a pair that'll actually fit. Mm -hmm. And oh. if they do fit, How much then is too I'm, much, I'm hooked. How much? And I'm hooked. Yeah. I'm hooked. A um, couple hundred bucks? Yep. Yeah. On yeah. jeans? I mean, when I say, when I say, if I find a good I pair, it. I know I then it's that. like, it's like, that's just starting. I just bought a pair of yeah. jeans. Mm -hmm. Eleven dollars. Oh. Eleven bucks. <laughs> Where? I think a store. <laughs> <laughs> somewhere on a street. Somewhere. And you? Some That's guy selling it out of his van. Yeah, I don't know. Wait right. till you wash them. They're gonna no. come, come yeah, fall apart. Fall apart. My, my first thought. You know, I didn't use this. My first thought was laser eye surgery. I'd probably spend more. Yes. I haven't done it, but if yeah. I were to, I'd probably spend a little you, more. Yeah, exactly. As opposed you to the guy in the van in the back alley. Doing the yeah, make, make a buy. <laughs> my real Good choice. Idea. Big screen TV. Big screen TV. Mm -hmm. You gotta have it done the right. The whole surround sound guy. system. You gotta such have a guy it thing, right? right. The bigger yeah. the better. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Answer Absolutely. carefully. Size matters in what? the man cave, ladies and gentlemen. Well, yes, it does. All right, here's the, the one that the pop, uh, the wallet pop Canada list. This is made the top. Kitchen knives. That's smart. Yeah. yeah. A good knife makes all the difference. Mm. Mattresses. Definitely. Yeah, because yeah, there are a lot of cheap mattresses out there. You want to make sure you get a good night's sleep. A good desk chair. This is probably something, you know, eh, oh, no. you know, okay. How about a reliable barbecue? Yeah. That's a good one, actually. It is. Well, it, as opposed to what a hibachi? Well, well, you can exactly. You can get the small barbecues that aren't worth it, but barbecues can be up to ten thousand dollars. Right, exactly. I only spent like a few hundred bucks on right. my barbecue. Right. And last but not least, bed sheets. I think this is pretty important, right? Thread I count is yeah. key. Yeah. yeah. No, it is. It actually is. There's Look nothing like being yeah, no, in a, a high thread count. Well, except he's, he's the man with the cheap jeans saying yeah. thread count yeah, matters. That's right. I have no idea about this about you. All right, coming up on the morning show, actor <laughs> Travis Milne drops by the morning show. He's going to talk about the return of the hit show, Rookie Blue. That and more still ahead. Don't go away. Good morning, everybody. Travis Milne plays Officer Chris Diaz in the hit global series Rookie Blue. The show returns tonight with an all-new episode. Take a look. Never got his name. Um, he had brown hair, though. Brown hair. Any, anything else? He was big into words, a lot of words, all over his arms, chest, legs. What about you, man? You got any ink? No, no. I mean, I've, I've always wanted one, but... Uh... I'm a dad now, so yeah, my son's name's Christian. We're going to let you get back to it. And Travis Milne joins us we now. Good morning. We have to ask the question. So do you have one? I d the new tattoo is no tattoos. That's oh. oh, you know what? I totally oh. think you're right. Yes. I have one, and I was thinking of getting another, and then I thought maybe the tattoos Pull have back. jumped the shark. I think it's overdone. Yeah. Yeah. And there's no going back, right? 
There's well, no going no, back. It, well, once it's done, you can get rid of it, but it, it always stays. It stays. Yeah, it's like there's a scar there Mentally. or whatever. Interesting. <laughs> <concept>. <laughs> so. so you've been yeah. in uh, here now in Toronto for four years, you said? Yes. Yeah, we were chatting during the break. Um, born in Alberta, then spent some time in Vancouver launching your career. Um, how are you adjusting to life Love here? it. Love yeah. it here. Love, love the city. Um, yeah, it's great. Uh, I, I also feel like I've lived in every city in Canada for like at least about a half a year. Yeah. Kind of like I left home at about 17, 27 now, so a decade of like moving around. Edmonton for half a year, Calgary for about a year and a half. And but you oh, were, oh. sorry Leslie, yeah. you, you, you were going to, you almost left acting before yeah, you Yeah, that's here. right, that's right. So I moved, so I ended, ended up kind of like tic tac and my way through uh, Edmonton, Calgary, and then from Calgary I was like, I'm doing it, I'm going to Vancouver. Mm -hmm. in, in my brain, Vancouver was like LA, it was like huge. Mm -hmm. It was, it was like uh, over encompassing. It was, they had tons of bridges and stuff, it was freaky. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, so I went out there and, and spent a couple of years out there. Right when I got there though, about two weeks later, I got a one year lease on an apartment. I was like, this is gonna be great. I'm in North Van, it's a little, you know, it's a little secluded, but it's fine, this is gonna be great. Writer strike. Uh, for, tough time. Yeah, yeah, for like three and a half years and then... So you said you're done with acting, you yeah, applied to... Power Engineering School. Of course, because that's always the backup plan. Right, that's right. exactly. That's the school. <laughs> Easy yes. breezy. Yes. So that's I got incredible. in and uh, I was planning on going back and then literally two weeks before I went back to school, I went in for the first audition for, it was called Copper at the time. And I was like, like okay, well, we'll just, last one. And my agent called me up, she's like, I, we didn't even, in fact, I stopped working for her. I, I was like, I'm just, we're done. done. We're done. And she's like, listen, Travis, you just got to go in this one last one. It was like out of a movie or something. And I was like, all right, fine, I'll do it. And I ended up. See, because no pressure. You were just like, whatever. whatever. Let's Slam just do it. it. Didn't even know my lines. Right. I just improv the whole thing. They were really? like, who's this guy? What is he doing? It's insane. And the show takes off. I mean. Yeah. Are Not you, only here, but in the U.S. as well. Right, an obvious mm. answer to this question, but are you surprised by the success of the show? That was the other thing, right? Yeah, yeah. it's just, it's, it's totally crazy. It's just awesome. So, so that's a yes. Blessing. Yeah, it was... Yeah. Because I, it, I guess in Canada, it's hard to get a, a drama series that actually lasts unless it's on the CBC, but, and even then, few people watch it. But this yeah, case, yeah. not only one of our top shows here on Global. Four years. In the U.S. ABC, as well. it's just, it's killing. Yeah. Number mm -hmm. one, and, and, and last, actually, when it, when it premiered, it was, it, in the last six years, it was the best thing uh, on ABC that, that it, in, in the summer uh, spot, uh, anyway, so. Yeah, it's, it's, it's amazing. total shock. Well, we did 13, so by the time we did a full season, I was like, I'm good. Even at this point, I can yeah. just take so happy. what I have and just live in a cabin for the rest of my life. Like, I'll be fine. We have to wrap up in just a second, but I just want to ask you quickly. So, uh, you've been on a bit of a hiatus now. The show's coming back tonight, and your character in this season's getting a little darker. Mm -hmm. Is Which, that sort of a fun thing to be playing? Yes, I'm really excited about that. Actually, you can kind of see the turn at the latter part of season three when yes. Chris gets yeah. the lovely surprise. We'll, we'll be tuning in tonight. Absolutely. Yeah. Travis Milne, thank you so much for being here. Really nice meeting you. Yeah. So. Thank you. Tomorrow on the show, Hanson. That's it. We're done. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. We'll see you later. Have a great day, everybody.